It's draft week, baby. And I know for so many people, this is their favorite time of the year. Because for the, the draft nerds, so to speak, they're excited because they've been compiling all these lists and all this data and looking at all the, this film and whatnot. And like, all right, this guy should go top five. He should go top ten. The best fit for him is on this team. Oh, if he goes to that team, he's going to excel. If he goes to that team, he's not going to do so well. And, and they just been going through this for a long time. And, and I give credit to you. all And I'm happy for y'all. I'm happy for y'all that have been doing that. Some people just do it for the first round. But there are people that really go through that for rounds one through seven. And I give it to y'all, man. Because me, I, I couldn't do it. Right now, I, I just I couldn't do it. But I give it to y'all. And I appreciate the fact that y'all do that. And I, like I said, I'm happy for y'all that this is a super exciting time. But when it comes to draft week, it is a week where so many of the rumors and, oh, is this guy going to go there? And is he going to go there? Is there going to be some draft day trades? All of those rumors, the, the questions, they get answered, which that's one of my favorite times about football season. When questions get answered, things that we've been wondering about and things that we've been anticipating and thinking, is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? And draft night is big. Draft week is big because uh, it's, it's another step in that process. So we'll see what happens when we get there in three and a half days. So that should be fun. And again, y'all know we will be live streaming on here per usual. But for draft day or draft week, it's often a time of reflection. We like to think back like, oh, man, I remember this draft where the Ravens got him. I remember that draft where the Ravens didn't get him. Oh, they missed on him. Oh, they got him. Oh, he was a steal. It, it just gives you a lot of time to really reflect. And each team does it. Each team goes through it. I've seen a lot of Ravens accounts like on Twitter and stuff. Oh, wh what was your favorite Ravens draft? Who was the biggest steal you think the Ravens ever drafted? Who you think was the biggest bust? And, and, and all that good stuff. But shout out to my guy. Kevin Ostriker from Locked On Ravens. We're going to have him on soon. But earlier today, he posted a little tweet, a little, little, little mem memory tweet. He said, three years ago today, the Ravens chose J.K. Dobbins with the 55th overall pick in the 2020 NFL draft. All right, so, so far, so good. Yeah. But then he led that up with he's accumulated 226 carries for 1,325 yards, and that's 5.9 yards per carry. So that, that's pretty good. It's pretty, pretty good. Like every two carries, you're getting a first down. That's, that's really good. And every carry, you're getting like over half of the yards it takes to get a first down. So that's pretty good. But anyway, continuing. So he's accumulated 226 carries for 1,325 yards, 5.9 yards per carry, and 11 touchdowns in just 23 career games. Now you look at that, and one could look at these numbers and be like, oh, so he got over 200 carries, 1,300 yards, um, averaging 5.9 yards a carry for just 11 touchdowns in, in 23 career games. Like, you could look at these numbers and be like, well, that's, that's what somebody would get, especially the, the 1,300 yards for a running back. They could get that in, in one season. In, in, in what, 16, 17 games. But then you think about it. Think about J.K. Dobbins. Think about the situations that he's been in. He has never been the guy for the Baltimore Ravens, ever. He has always been... A guy. It's always been sort of a 1A, 1B or 1A, B, C. Remember Mark Ingram was there? It has never been just J.K. Dobbins as him for the Ravens. Ravens have done a running back by committee. And they've done that for a while now. I think the, the last time, and correct me if I'm wrong, the last time the Ravens really had that guy at running back was Ray Rice. Now, uh, you know what? I take that back because Justin Forsett. After the whole Ray Rice thing, they got Justin Forsett in, in 2014. He was their guy. So, yeah, I take that back. And then even Alex Collins. I guess Alex Collins was their main guy, too. So, yeah, okay, so they have had that. But I guess recently, more recently, it's been running back by committee. But more Mark Ingram. No, see, what man, I guess when you say stuff out loud, you get to correct yourself on the spot. Because Mark Ingram in 2019, he was that guy for them. But then, well, I guess since J.K.'s been here, since J.K.'s been in the league, it's been by committee. Because he was always sharing the wealth. He never got to be him for the Baltimore Ravens. But anyway, um, J.K. Dobbins, he quote tweeted that. He saw my guy Kevin Ostriker's his, his, uh, tweet. And so, you know what? L let, me, let me chime in real quick. So in a tweet that 
I'm sure will probably be deleted later. We'll see. Hey, JK, leave it up. Leave it up if you're feeling like, leave it up. Leave it. Don't delete it. Don't delete it. Please don't delete it. But anyway, J.K. Dobbins, he says, <laughs> just imagine if, dot, 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 never mind. And he put an upside down smiley face. Now, uh, this would be a tweet that could lead you a lot of different directions. It could, it could lead you to believe a lot of different things. It could make you wonder, like, what is J.K. Dobbins talking about? What does he mean? J JK, why are you playing mind games like that, man? It's too early in the morning to be doing that because he tweeted this at 7.56 a.m. It's like, J.K. Dobbins, if you're going to be doing go, go to sleep and then re rethink this tweet later. But no, we all know what he's talking about. We all know. I was um, going through his stats because, uh, of course, he's been in the league since 2020. Uh, missed 2021. It was looking like it was going to be a good year for J.K. Dobbins, but of course the injuries with him, Gus Edwards, just is just a, a mess. Um, but so he he his stats are from 2020 and 2022. But when I went through them, like even this year, the the his his attempts. So again, just a reminder, he's never had a chance to be the guy. But looking at his attempts, 13 attempts, 17 attempts. I think the 17 attempts uh, that he got. In Pittsburgh on January 1st, I think that might actually be a record. That might actually be his highest attempts that he's ever had uh, in a game before. Uh, because he got 17 attempts in Pittsburgh, uh, and he got 93 yards, 5.5 yards of carry. But anyway, um, 12 attempts, 13 attempts, 15, 7, 8, 13, 7. And I know earlier this year, he was coming back from the injury, so he wasn't all the way himself early on in the, in the year. So context is important with that. Um, and we see like at, he took his break, like the games before like he, he was coming back from injury this off season. Um, but so early in the season, like against the Patriots, cause they held him out for the first couple of weeks. Remember against the Patriots, he had seven carries against the bills in, in uh, October 2nd, he had 13 carries, uh, October 9th against the Bengals. He had eight carries October 16th. He had seven carries, but then, then he went for the surgery. He went for the cleanup surgery. Then he came back uh, about two months later in December. He had 15 carries. Uh, the next week, he had 13 carries. The next week, he had 12 carries. And the following week, he had 17 carries. So we see his workload definitely improved at the end of the season when he was, like, fully good to go. Um, so I mean, it could have been a little bit more, but it did improve. So got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, but then going back to 2020, when he was fully healthy, um, week one, seven carries, then two carries, then one carry, uh, then five carries, then one carry, then nine carries, then 15 carries. Oh, I guess against Pittsburgh, that's when they bring J.K. Dobbins out because that's the only games where he really got a bunch of carries like that, I guess in them real physical games. Uh, so against Pittsburgh, he had 15 carries, and 12 carries, five carries, 15 carries against the Titans. So again, another physical game, uh, 11 carries against the Cowboys, 13 against Cleveland, 14 against Jacksonville, uh, 11 against the Giants, 13 against the Bengals. Then in the two, two playoff game that year, he had nine carries and 10 carries. So 17, that is, that's his record. And he's only gotten 17 carries uh, just one time. And again, that was in the last regular season game of this year against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So J.K. Dobbins, um, he is somebody that sounded off against uh, the lack of usage that he's got with the Baltimore Ravens throughout his career. Uh, he let it be known like, hey, like I, I want to be used. I think I should be getting more carries than this. He, like he's, he's continued to let that be known. Um, and we all feel it, too. We all feel it, too. But then it's like at the same time, a lot of us have felt that Gus, he deserves more carries as well. So Ravens have been in a very, like, tricky situation with their running backs. Uh, something that we talked about a lot is feeding the hot hand, rolling with the hot hand, sticking with the hot hand. And it's important to do that, especially with running backs, because the more they go, the more they flow. It just makes sense. And J.K. Dobbins has shown, like, hey, he, he can be nice, man. But Gus Edwards has also shown, like, hey, he can be nice, man. And I remember uh, earlier this offseason, um, a lot of fans were at sort of a crossroads wondering what was going to happen with Gus Edwards um, because he had a sort of significant cap hit, especially for a backup, not a feature running back. Um, a lot of Ravens fans thought he may be cut or traded. Um, and that was a 
It was something of significance, uh, but the Ravens did restructure his deal. Um, so I think they lowered his cap hit, uh, and he can get some stuff back in like incentives and stuff. Um, but he ain't going anywhere, so he will be here. But both him and J.K. Dobbins are each on one-year deals. They both have one year remaining on their contracts. So both of their contracts run out at the exact same time. So this is going to be quite the season, man. It's going to be quite the season. They did re-sign Justice Hill on a uh, two-year deal. I believe it was a two-year deal. Um, so they're getting all three of their guys back. So that gives them flexibility uh, at the running back position. Um, I know some people thinking that the Ravens could draft Robinson at running back. And I know that would, uh, that would be pretty interesting. But I cannot put it past the Ravens to draft him, though. Uh, because, you know, that's something that Ravens would do something like that. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But it's going to be a big year. It's going to be a very big year, very critical year uh, for the Ravens, uh, their current top two running backs. Because, again, after this year, they're free agents. They're scheduled to be free agents. So nothing is guaranteed. And the Ravens, I'm trying to think the last time they like gave a, a running back that they drafted a second contract, I guess technically Justice Hill. Because they drafted him in the fourth round of uh, what year was that? I forgot what year it was, but now he's on the second contract with the team, so technically him. But as far as a starter, was it Ray Rice? It might have been. I don't even know. But anyway, we'll see what happens with J.K. Dobbins. Um, I, I hope that he does get more of an opportunity. But again, context is important because Gus, Gus is sitting there too. And it's just it's just a really tricky situation, but... Again, it's, it's all about the hot hand, though. It's all about the hot hand. It's all about what's working against whatever defense they're facing. Um, but it's important to really get guys going, uh, especially when they show you, like, hey, I can make some plays. Like, hey, I, I could break one off. I could break off a big one. And I, I remember going a couple years back in 2020, um, I remember just being frustrated because there would be times when J.K. Dobbins, he would get a handoff, he would break. He would break a long one. Then you wouldn't see him anymore. Be like, oh. Okay, well, what happened to J.K. Dobbins? I just, okay, all right. Well, I guess they, I don't know. Um, and, but again, that was 2020. In 2022, we saw improvements with, uh, with him getting more carries. But hopefully that can continue. Hopefully they can build off of that. I know they, they obviously got a new offensive coordinator, so Greg Roman is not there anymore. And that, that's one of the things that was concerning, too, because it's like, how do you have a running back complaining in a, a run first, a run oriented offense. That's that's crazy. Like, that's crazy. Think about that. How do you have a, you got a running back, a running back complaining, a running back upset with his usage in a run first offense? That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. But with Todd Munkin, we'll see um exactly how he uses J.K. Dobbins, how he uses Gus Edwards, how he potentially uses the Justice Hill, how he uses. Uh, all of the guys, and, and a big part of it is um, just playing them to their strengths, uh, getting them involved. I, I, I like that, um, especially with the addition of Odell Beckham Jr., uh, and we'll see if they make any other additions as well. Only time will tell, but I do like that um, this could be a good problem to have. When you have several good players and you have multiple good players at one position or if you have multiple good offensive players, just getting a hot hand, establishing a hot hand. I like that it's a good problem to have because that means you have talent. And that's where everything starts, putting together a talented team um, that can make some stuff happen. So a running back, you got a J.K. Dobbins, you got a Gus Edwards, you got a Justice Hill, potentially more. Tight end, you got Mark Andrews. Um, the other tight ends, they're not quite as established yet. There's potential, but they didn't, haven't tapped into that potential yet. We've seen some flashes from Isaiah Likely. He's not there yet, obviously. He was a rookie last year, though, so he's not expected to be there yet. Um, but Isaiah Likely, you got Charlie Cole also. We'll see what happens with those two. Um, and then at wide receiver for now, you got Rashad Bateman. You got Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, you got Nelson Aguilar, Devin DuVernay, Proche, Wallace. Um, and obviously the, the group could be better. They also could be worse, um, but they're not done being improved yet. This is not the final roster. This is not it for them yet. Um, so there's still some potential moves that could be made. So we'll just see if they are. 
So anyway, draft coming up. A couple days. Should be fun. And the draft is for a couple of days, but I'll see you on the first day. I love y'all team. Keep clean. Of course, I'll see y'all before then too, but like J.K. Dobbins, um, <laughs> he, it seemed like he wanted to be at one point uh, this offseason, but that's it's, it's all good now. But like he won't be when it comes to being a Baltimore Raven this offseason. We'll see about next year. Next year we'll be telling for J.K., for Gus Edwards, even for Justice Hill too. Even I know he signed a two-year deal, but still. But anyway, team, keep it clean. We out. I love you.